Hello, Dr. Godfrey. How are you doing? Okay. So you have written a number of articles that are quite interesting, and I will be starting with your piece on multiracial whiteness. But before mm -hmm. I do so, I will be reading a statement uttered by Professor Christina Beltran of, the New York, of New York University. Whiteness is the politics of aggression, exclusion, and domination, and multicultural whiteness reflects an understanding of whiteness as a political color and not simply a racial identity. It is a discriminatory worldview in which feelings of freedom and belonging are produced through the persecution and the dehumanization of others. Quick question. The concept of freedom emerged in the West. The West abolished slavery. So why do we confuse whiteness with oppression? Are you asking me that question or are you asking her that question? I'm asking you that question. She, 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 she can't provide an answer. No, 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 what she's saying is utter nonsense. She obviously wants... Uh, uh, some uh, some woke capitalist to give her money, or she wants a higher position within the community of academic lunatics. Uh, I don't know why she says it, it makes no. The, the, the statement is patently false, uh, but people are rewarded for making such false statements. Um, the the idea, of course, of, of multiracial whiteness, as I argue in my piece, can be used. Um, to go after black people who side with white conservatives, that they're really they're really not black. They're they you see even though they look black, they're really white, <laughs> because uh, you know they they take the side of of white traditionalists or something like that. Um, <clears throat> but one of the arguments I've made for a very long time is that race and gender are not really about race and gender; they're about attempts to create a unified leftist block. Um, that will destroy traditional Western civilization. And it's paid for by white people who usually, you know, attack other white people and get blacks to, to, uh, to do this for them. Uh, I, you know, my, my argument is that there's a white civil war and some blacks may land up on the conservative side with the whites and many whites land up on the anti-white side, or what seems to be the anti-white -white side. Uh, to be a true woman is to hold the views of Kamala Harris. Um, if you hold the views of uh, Candace Carson, Dr. Carson's wife, who is a Bible reading Christian and so forth, uh, and, uh, and also a highly intelligent constitutional lawyer, you're not really black, you just look black. Um, whereas presumably Mr. Dorsey, uh, Jack Dor Dorsey, who runs Electoral Facebook or something like that, he's, he really is black, even though he looks white, because he hates other white people. So, I mean, that, that, that's what it comes down to in the end. It's, it's really not about race or gender. Uh, it's who will aid in the destruction of Western civilization. But Paul, I recognize that few Blacks identify that as a group, Black people are being used by whites who are in a civil war, as you said. Why are so few Blacks waking up? There, there are people like Larry Elder and Candice Owens. She has started a, a new brand. But I get the impression that African-Americans are less likely to agree with people like us. Why is this so? Yeah, uh, I think there are a number of reasons for that. One, there's not <coughs> that many places for Larry Elder or Candice Owens. <laughs> you know, I mean, they, they've sort of maxed out on blacks whom they can use on Fox News. Um, and, you know, if you're living, if you're living in a black society, uh, even if you're living in an upper class black society uh, and you don't take politically correct leftist views, they kick you out. It's like being in a university, you know, and having the wrong views. So th there really is no advantage to people doing that. If, if you're a conservative person who's black, who's running, you know, in politics, you're going to get absolutely trounced by some disgusting, corrupt black race hustler. You know, like uh, what's that fellow, Nafumi, or something? He have some African name for himself, so, uh, uh, or uh, uh, Jim Clyburn in South Carolina. All these people play the race card, and they do very well. And uh, the, the the question is, you know, why do they do well? Part of the the reason I would give you is that they win a lot of applause from from white people. 
because the white leftist media is anti-white. <laughs> so, uh, you know, every time Michelle Obama uh, attacks the white race, her, her popularity goes up. They make sure it goes up. She becomes even more admired um, because, uh, you know, the game that the media is playing is that any black person who attacks whites is, is a good person. Even if that person goes out and commits murder, they'll defend that person. So, so the uh, blacks who want to get ahead um, understand what the what the game is. Now, there also is something that you point out in things you've written, something I point out, that black identity um, is based on uh, on being anti-white, you know, and attacking white racists for your problems. And uh, you know, the reason we don't do better, or we're, you know, white families are breaking up is because of, of, of white racism. And all these whites say exactly the same thing. President Biden says it all the time, right? It's systemic racism. So, you know, you don't even have to bear responsibility for what you do because uh, white li liberal leadership, the leadership of the United States is telling you that it's not your fault, it's the fault of white people. But black Americans are being duped a small percentage of African-Americans control over 70% of the wealth in the black community. And a leading activist who's affiliated with the BLM movement recently bought a home in a very, in a very upscale white community. So black Americans are being duped. So for example, I read recently that obviously when you reduce standards for students, they do less well in school. Many states are lowering standards to appease black Americans so in the future, Black Americans will be less competitive. Therefore, elites will do better than poor Blacks because their children will be exposed to, to higher standards. So again, identity politics is a strategy used by the Black elite to oppress ordinary people. What, are, what is your take? Well, I, I, I think, you know, Blacks th think it's a kind of win-win situation. My kids won't have to take any more tests. They can go to Yale. Uh, they, they'll be given scholarships because they're historic victims of white people and were slaves and are living in a systemically racist society. Um, minority groups, not just blacks, minority groups like to be treated that way. You know, they, they want to be told that they are victims of, of, the, uh, of the white Christian majority. And, you know, I've, I've been among all kinds of ethnic minorities. They all behave that way. It's not just blacks behave that. Blacks behave that way in a more self-destructive way. You know, I mean, they uh, uh, dysfunctional families, things fall apart for them. Uh, they can't deal with the crime. Uh, they, they have horrible politicians whom they support who are race hustlers and so forth. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I always tell people the, uh, uh, the story of, of when I was a young professor at a Midwestern college, we had a... Uh, a, a person teaching physics named Guapalo Rao. I don't think he's even alive anymore. And he was a Hindu and his wife and daughters would walk behind him. And I assumed he was very conservative. And I asked, this is 1980. And I asked him if he was going to vote for uh, Ronald Reagan. He said, I would never vote for him. He's against the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment for Women. And I was not surprised to hear this. I didn't think it was a hypocrite. Um, what he was telling me is that in my in my uh, sub society or subgroup, um, we are traditional and we live the way we lived in the Middle Ages. But when it comes to the Gentiles out here, you know, I want to see them. I don't want to see them impose their morality and their way of life, which might exclude us. Uh, therefore, I support the most ra culturally radical people around. And th 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 this to me is not at all unusual in ethnic minorities. People from India generally, they do very well. They're professionals. Uh, they, they live in a traditional you know, kind of Indian cocoon. But if it comes to voting, if it comes to taking, they're always going to take the position of the, of the radical left. Um, and that, you know, somebody asked me, why do they do this? Well, the answer is they do not like or trust white Christian society. I mean, it's as simple as, simple as that. Having grown up among Jews, let me tell you, I think this is very common among Jews. I mean, I think the major reason they're on the left is they really don't trust white Christians. They think they're going to, you know, unleash violence on them or something like that. I mean, I've, I've heard this many times. 
So uh, my, my own background, my own subculture was different, but I mean, I, I certainly heard this from Jews. So it, it, this is not unusual. Blacks are following a traditional ethnic minority pattern. Now it is a problem um, if you're trying to maintain moral standards in the general society, and you have to deal with people who think this way. Um, but uh, I don't think there's anything peculiarly black about it. <clears throat> I, I agree with you to, to an extent, but my issue is, is, is quite clear. Taiwanese Americans, Indian Americans, and Chinese Americans on average earn more than white Americans. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, the concept of identity politics is not unique to black people, but it har identity politics harms black people because they're not doing as well as other groups. So for example, Asians may be fiscally and socially conservative, they vote for the Democratic Party, but Asians don't want a slap on the back. They, they, their children are encouraged to study hard and engage in intellectual rigor, whereas the reverse is true for African-Americans. I, I think this is why we have a problem. You know, I, th I think there are many problems with, with, with American Black society. I think they're terrible problems, but I don't think they're, um, uh, the fact that they get conservative answers on questionnaires and then vote for the radical left uh, is at all unusual for an ethnic minority, because I think most ethnic minorities behave precisely that way. Um, uh, I, I, th I think, though, in the case of, of, the, of the Blacks, it is disastrous because what they do is they shift responsibility for their own shortcomings onto the white society. Uh, being encouraged, of course, by whites who want to destroy other whites, which is, I think, exactly what white liberals are about. Uh, they hate other white people whom they look down at, whom they think are subhuman, and what you know, are, uh, unleash Black Lives Matter against the you know the white shopkeeper or the Chinese shopkeeper, or whatever. Uh, but I, 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 th I think in, in the case of the blacks, there there is a much um, uh, a much more you know pernicious behavioral pattern because it goes beyond uh, simply supporting, you know, the, the most uh, destabilizing, radicalizing elements in the outside culture, which they, which they, you know, dutifully do, but also uh, doing very little to help yourself. I mean, they actually believe this junk, you know, that it's these white people. Are, we're not responsible. It's the white people. By the way, this is the worst thing you can tell any group that has to improve itself, right? That is not your fault. It's the fault of these, these horrible white people over here. And this is encouraged, of course, by white liberals who say this all the time and by, and by idiots like Joe Biden who say this all the time uh, because they, they think that's what their base wants to hear. Um, but, uh, you know, I agree it has much more negative effects in the case of Blacks, um, even, even if the attitude, the, the double standard is common to most ethnic minorities. <clears throat> yeah, brilliant analysis as usual. And I, I would like to make a point. In the 90s, a study was done arguing that entrepreneurs want to employ African-Americans, but they lack the, the appropriate work ethic. So you're, you're right. Historically, Irish American experienced discrimination, so did Italian Americans, but Black Americans seem unable to evolve from the doldrums based on what I've been reading. Even if they're doing better in terms of academics and income growth, the culture is still quite negative and I don't see a light. Yeah, I, don't see, I don't see a light either, but I, you know, I think part of the problem is the people that, that Blacks hold up to admire, Black elites hold up to admire, not just ordinary Black. Um, they're political radicals, activists, subversives. These are the people who are supposed to, uh, race hustlers. Uh, now, Blacks also produce inventors, physicians, medical. They, they produce these things. They may not produce them in the same proportion as Jews or Chinese, but they do produce them. Uh, what about, you know, Jewish industrial, uh, black industrialists who were black, they were black industrials who did very well. Um, but these are not the people who may, I, I noticed that, that Ben Carson, uh, who's one of the most distinguished black physicians in the United States, um, had a school renamed because he worked in Republican administration. I suspect they renamed it for some, you know, black political activists. There's just too much political activism and not enough stress on genuine scientific intellectual accomplishment. 
uh, and at least part of this is, is I think, the, the work of white people, the white left, who glorify these blacks, black, black leftist activists. Um, as you know, I am not particularly a fan of Martin Luther King either. Uh, and that's okay. He was uh, he was quite promiscuous. That's okay. And other and other and other and other flaws. So yeah. that's quite okay. But Elizabeth Wright, who's this? Thing? I agree. She's a marvelous woman. Yes. I, no. I, I unfortunately I, I don't know. I, I I knew Elizabeth. She seems to have like just she just she died of cancer. I I never got to meet her. But you know, I think I think she she was a highly intelligent. So she was sort of like Thomas Sowell. She was very very smart. Uh, she just never went as far as some of the others. Yes, and that's surprising. But in one of her numerous pieces, Elizabeth Wright tells us that in Black culture, pastors are respected, engineers, and dubious characters. And she said that she can only repose confidence in the Black man when he refuses from acting like a race hustler. So the Black man must own a bank. He must invent. He must be an intellectual. He should not expect white people to satiate his egos and this is exactly what, what you're saying in the black community lebron james is respected and that's okay lebron james is a talented athlete jay-z is respected jay-z is a is an entertainer and a billionaire he's very wealthy but at the same time the intellectuals and the scholars and the writers and the philosophers are not respected and then people write articles lamenting that there is a paucity of blacks in science or philosophy when black culture is not engendering that particular outlook mm -hmm. i agree i agree no I, th I think it's a serious problem and i have no idea why michelle i, I wrote an article on this why michelle obama is admired more than uh, than candace carson who's a really admirable woman and the answer of course is she's a race hustler and the white liberal establishment wants wants that you know they want those people around uh to beat up on other white people uh, and i think i think that's what it's about uh and the blacks you're right the blacks just get used um they let themselves get used but they 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 they, they do get used um, I, I don't know why isn't Clarence Thomas considered a highly intelligent uh, black jurist? <laughs> he's he's been like totally obliterated, I suppose, because he votes the wrong way or something like that. Uh, he has in a, in a much greater mind than Thurgood Marshall, but then Marshall was consistently on the left, and that's why you know he's featured as uh, you know as a, as a greater legal thinker. Um, it, it's the same bias you know that that exists with the media and dealing with white people. That you know, if if you're if you're perceived as being on the right, they they just you know just drop you uh, uh, <clears throat> drop you off a cliff. You don't count. But if you are if you are a radical of some kind, you're important. Uh, I mean, you sort of wonder. You had like a black movie maker like Spike Lee. Uh, let's assume Lee. Uh, you know, it's counter reality. But uh, let's assume he were very conservative instead of a black hustling. You know, a race hustling leftist. Um, I doubt that his, his movies would be uh, as widely praised, you know, by the media and by the movie reviewers. Well, I, 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 I really agree with you. There is a writer, he's no dead, called Abram Harris. He was a brilliant black economist. And I've always been puzzled that black people ignore Abram Lincoln Harris. They remember Dubois. They remember mm -hmm. MLK, they love Al Sharpton, right. but they cannot remember a brilliant man like Abraham Lincoln Harris, who wrote on institutional economics and economic philosophy in general. Mm -hmm. Had Abraham been a white man, he would have been praised. White people don't forget Adam Smith and Adam Ferguson. And it's, it's remembering an intellectual and an athlete, that's okay. You, you don't need to show the, the intellectual by preferring the athlete. But Paul, there is a disturbing trend, anti-Asian racism. Mm -hmm. According to a report published in Front Page magazine, relative to, to their size in the population, minorities are more likely to be perpetrators of hate crimes. But some are saying that anti-Asian racism is a function of white supremacy. Does that make sense? No, because the percentage of whites involved in hate crimes against Asians is lower than uh, the percentage of black or Hispanic, uh, considerably lower. Um, what happens is that, you know, if, if an American black commits a crime against an Asian, they do this all the time. Uh, the race thing is just kept quiet. 
if, if some crazy white person does this, like the one in the massage parlor in Georgia, even though it does not seem to be correlated to race in any way, they would try to blame it, you know, on white racism. Uh, but the, one, the ones that are ascribing this blame are other white people. You know, this is my argument. They're sort of you using it to control other white people. This sort of, sort of the uh, uh, the stigma of racism. Uh, in the in the case of the uh, uh, of the Asians, there is no pattern of, of white anti anti Asian racism. I mean, it's totally it's an invented category uh, by the media. Another thing that's invented is that policemen are running around shooting blacks who are unarmed. It hardly ever happens. <laughs> in 2019, about 15 of, yeah, right. of those cases occurred, only 15. And the truth is that white men are more likely to be killed by the police. That's, yeah. This is what the, the, the studies tell us. Right. I don't have a problem with black people expressing grief. Extra judici judicial killings are wrong. But, the, but law enforcement is not replete with systemic racism. That is a lie. Recently, I mean, it's, it's, it's not only a lie, but it's a diversion from the serious crime problem in black neighborhoods, uh, which can only be addressed by somebody bringing order there. And defunding the police is not going to work. No. I mean, wh wh where they've done this, the crime rate just uh, uh, just accelerates. Yeah, <laughs> Ro Roland Freyas data to back up your claim. When the police draw back, murders will go up. But as you mm -hmm. said, as we established earlier, Black elites, in collaboration with the Democratic Party, have duped blacks and gullible white people. They have a problem with the police, but their communities are, are protected by private security or the public police force. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hypocrisy. Right. And so many people believe th this nonsense. When you watch CNN and MSNBC, this is what is par parroted over and over, that black people are, are doing poor in America when they're more likely to die in a car accident than to be killed by the police. And I'm specifically referring to black men. This was recently published by a conservative research organization. But there's also another spectacular arc article you have written titled, The Sacralization of Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. BLM is like a terrorist group. I consider BLM to be a terrorist group. Right. If you're encouraging the destruction of property and looting, that's, that's violence. It's both political and economic violence, and it's also psychological violence. BLM is a problematic group, but it's praise and love. BLM gets more funding than conservative organizations that are interested in truth. How can we solve this problem? I know you're a pessimist. No, what do you, you said the Black Lives, well, I mean, they are a terrorist organization, of course, but um, I think they're less and less Black. Uh, they're funded by white people and more and more of, if, if you notice over the summer, more and more of the people, especially now uh, on the West Coast, people showing up in these riots are white. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the blacks sort of peel off after a while and they're replaced by white because whites are behind it. Uh, it's white radicals who are, and also with Antifa, it's white radicals who are doing this. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's funny. I'm sometimes I've been accused of being some kind of white nationalist when the reality is I think whites are the ones who are doing all of this, you know, and they're using blacks. Uh, so uh, uh, you could say that I'm into it's it's I, I the, it, it is the white left that is thoroughly evil, pernicious and is behind everything that I'm seeing. There would not be a black problem were it not for, there, there might be, a, it would be a minor problem compared to what we have now. I think they incite, the, they incite the riots, they incite the violence, uh, then, then they run to bail people out because it helps the Democratic Party, which in an article I described as the party of thugs. Um, but you know, they, they, as you pointed out, they're also guarded at home. They have their own guards, these people, while at the same time unleashing chaos and destruction on the on the general society. Um, but I, I, I think Black Lives Matter has less and less to do with Blacks. So the Black race hustlers obviously support it. Kamala Harris supports it. I'm sure Biden supports it. Um, but it seems to be more and more uh, uh, of a white terrorist group. I, I agree. One day I expect someone like you to be interviewed by CNN. That would be awesome. I would never be interviewed by uh, by Fox News. 
no conservative website would ever review me yeah. because I, I just don't have their party line. I think I, not only I don't have their party line, I think they're contemptible. I think they are, they're a large part of the problem that we face, that there is no serious opposition to the left. Before, I want to digress a bit and talk about white nationalism, but we're, we're, we won't have a scientific discussion. Quick question. Are white nationalists as dangerous as the BLM movement? White nationalists are a minority. They're, Jared Taylor is not encouraging white people to kill blacks. Jared Taylor yeah. doesn't have someone like Errol Atkins or a crazy man like the person who's leading the, 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 the FTP movement. So why are democratic polit politicians seeking to target Trump supporters? Because whites are made to feel so guilty about their history that, you know, and of course, all white society is now systemically racist. So that, you know, calling somebody, I think the term now is white supremacist, um, has become, you know, a key liberal term. Apparently, the Georgia law that requires voter identification is being pushed by white supremacists. Um, somebody was joking with me and saying, you know, you couldn't put all the white nationalists in the country into the trunk of his car. I mean, they have to invent these people. Um, what, what, one, one of the points that, that you know, that, that always se seems to come up is that, you know, I refuse to condemn this and this person as a white nationalist or white this. Uh, and the answer is because it is, it is such a ridiculous charge you're asking me to make of such a small group. I mean, why would I even care to do that? I mean, it's like, you know, living in Nazi Germany and being told to, to condemn Jewish Bolshevism or something. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, uh, the, 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 the people in the Democratic Party now are black racialists being supported by anti-white whites. So that you have someone like Kirsten Clark, who is being considered, uh, she will get the post, you know, eventually of civil rights commissioner. She's a black racial nationalist. And uh, uh, I think Merrick Garland, who's the attorney general, uh, spoke about a wonderful choice she is. Now, she is far more of a racialist than Richard Spencer or any of these people. Right. Or Greg Johnson. She's far more of a and she's a more dangerous racialist because of her position. So I see absolutely no reason to waste a second of my time beating up on people who have no influence and no control over anything and are not even, you know, a millionth as dangerous as this woman is or Al Sharpton or any of these other, you know, black race hustlers and racialists. So, I, I mean, I, it, it's ridiculous for me even to condemn any of these people, unless they're really violent and going out and killing black people or something like that, then they obviously are, you know, should be condemned. But because so-and-so thinks that whites are better than blacks, I'm supposed to condemn that person. I mean, you know, th this is ridiculous. Um, who cares? <laughs> you know, I don't care. Um, I do care about black racialists who are being put into high government positions because they can hurt us. Well, I read an article featured on the website Occidental Descent, and the writer, right, right. the writer, is a white nationalist, and he said that he has black friends, and in one of his pieces, he noted that a black woman condemned herself for having white friends, and I've read pieces like that all the time where black elites fear having white friends. But in my right. interaction with people who identify as white nationalists or tribalists, they don't appear to be racist. So yeah, what I, what, I, what I find interesting, though, is that you can have women's club but not men's clubs, right? Uh, you can have black organizations but not white organizations. And these are the rules set up by the white left. I mean, they're the ones setting up all the rules. It's not black people. It's white, the white left that is setting up these rules. So, so, for example, segregated gradu graduations are becoming really popular. Black students can graduate alone, but white students can't have a club. Whiteness is under assault. It's unfortunate. And when you make these assumptions, you sound like a racist, but it's the truth. But now I'm going to speak a little about the Democratic Party. But before I do so, I'll be reading an excerpt from your piece titled, a government of thugs by thugs for thugs. 
Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I love this piece. Sec Democratic appointees in the military up to and including Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin are teaching soldiers to revere B BL M vandals while, be, mm -hmm. while being put on guards against domestic terrorists, i.e. Republican voters. Anti-white mobs that burn down cities and shoot police have been redefined as anti-racist and are depicted as the natural allies of soldiers and the Secret Service. Are we living in a real country? What is the question you ask? I said, are we living in a real country? This can't be real. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a country that's being occupied by these uh, lunatics, you know. And, uh, you know, I don't, th I don't think uh, Biden won honestly in the presidential election. But I would be willing to admit that he probably got 70 or a million votes or more. Uh, and there are lots of people on that side. You know, and I don't I don't think they uh, were all at all unaware of the fact that if the Democrats took power, they do the crazy things they're now doing. Um, you know, so uh, there are a lot of people over on the other side. <laughs> well, yeah, I, Dr. Gottfried, I realize that you're laughing a, a lot because both of us can't believe that we live in such an insane world. It's just silly. But let me continue. A recent incident in Washington during which an, an Uber Eats driver was killed as two teenage girls occupied and crashed his car shows how democratic interests encourage the pampering of criminals. The mayor, Mural Bowser, an exuberant BLM celebrant, tried to shift blame from the teenage murderers on, onto their hapless victims. So shouldn't we arrest black people for committing crimes? Yeah, by the way, nothing is going to happen to them. They're not even going to serve time in jail. <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? The, the people who broke into the, the Capitol building, they were put in jail. Some of them were living in awful conditions in jail, whereas these people commit, committed murder. Nothing is going to happen to them. Uh, and as I indicated, that's may, maybe because... Uh, their parents voted for Mayor Bowser, and if they let them out in time, well, you know, on parole or whatever, or bail, they'll vote. They'll vote for the for the mayor. Um, but you know, I I I don't know anyone unless you have your own uh, a personal guard. I don't know anyone can live in Washington with that kind of government. Interesting. Maybe that's why I should not migrate. And again, you wrote another brilliant piece published by. American greatness, in which you denounce politicians for pandering to minorities. You you see that they're romantic. So this is my question: To what? Ex who? First question: Who is a conservative? That's the first question. Who is a conservative? Yes, what is con conservative? In my view, <laughs> that's a, that's my view yeah, yes, my <laughs> view is that con conservatism is a particularistic philosophy with subsidiary opinion. So, for example, if you are conservative in Western civilization, you are preserving Greco-Roman heritage or Christian heritage or the free market or limited government or civil society. That's my own position. So conservatism is a particularistic philosophy and you must be preserving an institution or a greater worldview. Voting against same-sex marriage does not make you a conservative. One person for the Daily Signal said that Blacks are conservative because they're against abortion and same-sex marriage, but that does not make one a conservative. So who is a conservative? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say that, that all of those things that, that you mentioned you know, are elements of what Americans have considered to be conservatism. Um, by the way, I was, I was criticized for my book on uh, uh, making sense of the American right that came out in 2008, because I suggested that the United States is not conservative in the same way that European countries were that had an established aristocracy a uh, class system and so forth, which, which conservatives defended in the face of revolution, um, that the United States has an Anglo-Protestant liberal heritage, classical liberal heritage. Um, 
I was not saying that people, I was not saying that as an, making that as an attack. <laughs> that is the American heritage. There's many good things about it. There's, there's good things about, about the other side as well. Um, but the, uh, uh, I, I think what we're looking at is not just particularistic. There is a universal element um, that, you know, uh, unlike the way, let's say, uh, an African tribe might live, uh, which is, you know, Vinid Bailey or Shanti or something, which, you know, is simply focused on itself. Um, West, Western civilization is based on the assumption uh, that, um, uh, that there is a shared reason that human beings have, you know, th that we can talk to other people, that our morals uh, are applicable you know, beyond our own, our own community, even if they're embodied in our law, specific, our, our positive law have developed over generations, as conservatives believe is necessary um, to, uh, to give law a sense of permanence. Uh, it has to be sort of rooted in a culture, but there is a universal aspect as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that's, that's what distinguishes us. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, people all over the universe, all over the world will resonate to Beethoven's music the way, the way somebody, I don't know, in Germany or France might have at one point, but, um, or Austria, but um, I, I, th I think our culture is more universally ac accessible than most other cultures, uh, certainly, certainly the nation culture, uh, from what I've studied of it. Um, and this, I think, is one of its advantages. Uh, so uh, I think there is a universal as well as a particular aesthetic. The other thing is the richness of Western civilization. Uh, what these people are making war on is the richest civilization that has ever existed. Yes. You know, you, you take like, every country in Europe produced more than just about anything else, anyone else in the world, you know, outside of Europe. I mean, it's an incredibly rich civilization. The English, the Germans, the French, the Italians, the Spaniards, the Russians. They all produced a lot. Even the Hungarians did. <laughs> so, uh, you, you know, it, it is the it is the richness of the. And then there was a, we have to have people come in from the third world to enrich us. How can you be enriched <laughs> anymore? What they're doing is they're throwing away their civilization. <clears throat> exactly. So within the context of conservatism, as we have defined it, to what extent are black people conservative and can they truly be assimilated into conservative culture as established by Western philosophy? I, I don't know. I, 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 the question is, which black person are you talking about? I think, you know, Ben Carson or the late Walter Williams was certainly a Westerner. I mean, they were nothing, you know, they were just, they were quintessentially Western, even if they, if they, if they were black. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, most of the white elites are violently anti-Western. I mean, that, that, that's their, the essence of them is the destruction of Western civilization. That's all they're, that's all they're about, <laughs> you know? So, um, you know, I, I think as I've argued in the past, although civilizations develop within particular ethnic cultural groups within the particular historical periods and so forth, um, that, you know, what Western civilization teaches does have a kind of universal uh, resonance or universal truth that other people have some ac can have access to so you not necessarily have to be white. On the other hand, the white elites are the worst enemies of Western civilization. I mean, no other group in history has tried as hard to destroy Western civilization. Yeah, yes. So I, I get your point and I agree. But what about those who will say that the Republican Party should discuss racism more or do more to reach out to black people? What do you say to such critics? Because the Republican Party is doing enough to reach out to black people. Well, I, I think the Republican Party is hopeless. It's sort of terminally cowardly. There's like nothing you can do to revive it. It's like every so-called right of center party in every Western country. They're all like the Republican Party. The the uh, uh, the Demokraten in Germany, the... Uh, uh, what is it, uh, La France en Marche in France, just go right through the list of conservative parties. There are useless parties. Everyone is useless. And what they do is they represent corporate elites, government workers uh, that, uh, uh, that offer some kind of minimal, innocuous opposition 
to a, to a stampeding left, to a crazed stampeding left. They don't do anything effective. They just slow down the left by about a, about a mini, you know, about a mini second or something. They don't, they're, they're useless. And in the United States, we have a conservative movement that's equally useless and whose which major achievement has been to cancel people like me. You know, that seems to be their greatest achievement. <laughs> they get rid of any dissenting voice on the right uh, while trying to cut deals with the left. Um, so, uh, you know, it is, the, it is the absence of opposition that becomes, I've argued, a factor. Um, uh, I mean, you, you, well, you might well lose anyhow, but if, if you're offering minimal resistance, you know you're going to lose. And this is basically what they, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at this, uh, uh, this stuff that Delta is boycotting Georgia. The other, Georgia, boycotting for what? The, the, the law, the, uh, the identification law in, uh, in Georgia is the same as in Delaware, New Jersey, this, but, you know, the, the left says, you know, we're not going to lie, we, 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 we boycott Georgia. They all do it. Now, what, what is the rights response, the official rights response? Nothing, absolutely nothing. We're nice people and we don't believe in boycotts. On the other side, they're bad, they believe in boycotts. Well, I believe in boycotts. I believe in 70 million people boycotting Coca-Cola, not using Delta Airline, um, and going and then punishing Citibank, every leftist group saying, we're not going to do business with you. Um, and then, you know, working like hell to create alternative media. I agree. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, that, that, that is the minimum. That, that, that's the least you can do. But no, we don't. I hear this, this, this from this idiot, Sean Hannity. And we do, don't, I don't believe in boycotts. I never would boycott. Well, fine. I mean, uh, uh, so how are you going to win? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, you know, Paul, as, as, as you do know, I'm not a fan of clickbait. But if we're going to make inroads into, into the American society, we need a propaganda program. Mm -hmm. That's just yes. being realistic. And this is one of the reasons why I've started this show. Mm -hmm. Voices like yours need to be heard. Well, the viewers don't know this, so I'm going to tell them, but I'm a big fan of your writing, like you're my hero. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're so humble, but I say it like all the time, you're my hero. But let me read. Well, but I, but I, 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 am, I am not a, uh, uh, admired by the conservative movement, which banned and canceled me in the 1980s. I've never well, been well, restored. Well, well, well. They hate can, me. Can I, look. The, the, I doubt the average conservative is smart enough to know that Americans are really classical liberals with Christian views. <laughs> I, w I, wish they, I wish they were that. I mean, they're not even that. <laughs> yeah, so for example. What the left was one week ago. You know, I mean, yes. <laughs> how, how, how many conservatives know Eric von Ledin? Well, he's German, so maybe I, I could be mispronouncing his name. But how many? Well, yeah, he was. I knew him very well. <laughs> I write about him. He was a friend of mine. Yes, we, we, have, we have a German correspondence. <laughs> <laughs> but but let me read the, the last statement from your piece and get your comments. We won't get anywhere hallucinating about all the groups that will be joining our side, but just haven't shown up yet. Least of all, let's stop pretending that those who repeatedly vote for truly destructive governments are just victims yearning to become right. the people. They are the ones right. who are entirely responsible for their disastrous choices. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, I, mean, I wrote that, but I agree. No, I'm sick of listening to the, the conservative movement telling me the people in New York, they're victims of the government. 70% of the ones who voted, voted for that government. How are they victims? I'm, I'm always hearing that the German people are responsible for Hitler. Hitler never won more than about a third of the vote in a, ger a ger German election, I, honestly. And that was during a terrible depression that he won those votes. People in New York vote for disastrous government in, in, in incredible numbers. Uh, blacks are not victims um, of the Democratic Party. They're the ones who support this corrupt race hustling party. They're, they're vote, uh, you know, uh, because they say they're not to blame for their crimes. The white people are to blame for their crimes or something like that. But, they, you know, the people who make these disastrous choices are entirely to blame. It, it is not, uh, you know, the, the people, the people show up and this is how the people vote. <laughs>
I know you're not fond of Al Sharpton and Maxine Water, so please tell those of us who may be unfamiliar with his history why people like Maxine and Al Sharpton, Al Sharpton should be condemned. Yeah, because they're uh, they're screaming black racists. They should be condemned, but they do have their good sides, as I tell people. Uh, I would much prefer Maxine Waters leading the Republican Party to having somebody like uh, Mitch McConnell doing it because <laughs> she, she plays for keeps. She goes yeah. after her enemies and tries to destroy M them. The Mitch is a nice guy. Mitch is a nice guy. But as the, as he's, he's not a nice guy when, when he attacked his president, Donald Trump. He went after Trump. He's a nice guy when he says Biden is a first rate fellow. He likes Biden. Biden is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> As you are aware, I'm a libertarian. I'm not fond of Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, but to mm -hmm. a degree, Farrakhan is a sensible guy. If black people want to create a separate state within a state, they should be able to do so. Recently, I wrote a piece on Murray Rothbard, and I noted that Murray Rothbard likes some of the characteristics of radical blacks. If blacks say, we don't want to be colonized by America, we need 500 acres, then they should be allowed to reside in that community. They, they don't, Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam is group, they're not encouraging white pe black people to be coddled by whites. So I am not a fan of Far Farrakhan or his views on Jews, but black auto autonomy is better expressed by someone like Farrakhan than the established black left. Yeah, I don't know. I I remember I know I know Murray well, but I I don't agree with this. I think the problem with Farrakhan is he demonizes white people. He treats them as the devil. Uh, he is a, an absolutely uh, vicious great black racialist, um, and he also thinks that the white people in the end owe blacks a living because bl whites are responsible for all the problems that blacks have, uh, and this is why we have to separate because the white people are are the devil. Now, if you had a, a black self-help movement that was not based on demonizing white people, but accepting responsibility for blacks, you know, that we have not been responsible in dealing with our own, we have to address our own problems, the kind of thing that someone like Larry Elder would say, I think, I think this is true, you know, or Walter Williams would have said, I think this is absolutely true. This is what, what you want. Um, Martin Luther King is, is, as I said, it's not a really a very good hero, a heroic figure for uh, such a movement because he was always uh, talking about white racist and what we what the whites owe the blacks, and he also favored reparations and stuff like this, affirmative action. Um, uh, but what what you, what you need is a you know somebody more like Booker T. Washington, who says that we, we you know we have to work to improve our own condition. Uh, and this should be our major concern. It should not be, you know, venting our hatred on white people. It should be trying to improve our own our own living uh, conditions um, and restore a sense of community and safety. <clears throat> Murray, Murray Rothbard praised Marcus Garvey. He didn't refer to Farrakhan. And I know you, you like Marcus Garvey. I just needed to, to correct that. But Paul, I have some new questions. They're not complicated. You're a genius. Question one, what is America? Is America a liberal country founded by liberal intellectuals for all people? Is America a white country founded by white men for white people? Or is it a liberal country founded for white people interested in tolerating non-whites? What is America? You know, I, I would say America has made a number of things depending on the period of time that you're looking at. Um, I would think America in its inception uh, you know, represents sort of a composite uh, of, uh, a collection of, of, of things. It is definitely Protestant. Uh, and, you know, the attempt to say it's really Russian Orthodox or Spanish Catholic or something is ridiculous or it's Jewish. It's probably closer to being, I don't know, Old Testament Jewish than it is to being Russian Orthodox. But I mean, it, you know, it has very much of a, uh, of a Protestant Calvinist character at its founding. Uh, and this, I think, is the source of social responsibility, morality within the society, uh, and the acceptance of individual responsibility. Um, 
I th- it, it is it does have a classical liberal founding because if you look at the Constitution, um, it is you know the people who write it are writing a classical liberal document. Uh, it is one based on uh, they're inventing their own government and it's based on on rights and they think that this is this is the kind of rational act they're engaged in. Uh, it is not a Burkean uh, invention. I mean, it's 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 something which they are uh, which they are creating, which they are constructing on the basis of their understanding of different governments and their advantages and failures. So, you know, the the constructivist nature of the government is, uh, and the fact that it has, you know, a list of rights attached to it are uh, indicate the liberal origins of the country. Um, but then, you know, it also has pockets of, of, of profoundly conservative populations. Uh, it has, you know, the, uh, the Southern planter class, then it has uh, the Dutch patroons in New York, uh, then it has all these very conservative religious communities that settle in the United States. So I, I, I think the United States sort of contains or embraces all of these elements at one time. Um, and, uh, but I, I, I really don't see it primarily as a conservative country in any European sense. I think the, uh, these American conservative traditionalists with whom I feel some affinity uh, do exaggerate the the conservative nature uh, or the conservative character, traditional conservative character of the founding. I think it's all of these things. Um, uh, it is it is founded definitely as a white Northern European country, um, but this doesn't mean it has to exclude other people. You know, you can let you can let them in, but my argument is you don't let in populations in such a way as to destroy the fundamental character of the country. Um, and that has always been my view. So, you know, you, if, if people can come in and, and can become, I don't know, more like Northern European Anglo-Protestants, fine. You know, you let, they can keep their own religion if they have a different skin color, that's, that's okay. In the case of uh, blacks in America, um, most of them uh, did not come of their own free will, they were brought here. So you do it, we do have some responsibility, but this does not mean to me that you you mobilize radical blacks to vote, you know, and to totally destroy the 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 constitutional character of the country, you know, to transform it in a way that has happened because of the uh, the civil rights revolution, um, you know, there there has to be some way to accommodate uh, the minorities that have been denied rights, but at the same time not allow this to uh, to destroy the constitutional character of the country or to radicalize us culturally. So I think it's it's, it's kind of balancing act. Um, uh, As for other groups that are led into the country, I mean, this has to be done, you know, in accordance with interest, national interest. There is no imperative to open borders and let everybody in. Uh, I think this is absolutely insane, unless you're a Democrat and want to have a permanent Democratic majority uh, based on illegal voters or whatever they let in. Um, So I, I I think the United States does have a foundational character, but at the same time is sort of open to change, but the change is not, cannot uh, be infinitely open, which is what it's become, you know, and, uh, you know, you have to, you have to preserve lawfulness, constitutional order, um, a separation of powers. Um, and I, I think also the, uh, you know, the basic, what should we say, Judeo-Protestant or biblical Protestant character of the country. Although again, you can have Catholic presidents and so forth, but, but there, there is a very definite Protestant character to the United States, I'm always arguing. I mean, whether it's North or South, even before the Civil War, the South is uh, predominantly Protestant. Um, and so is the North in different ways. So uh, this I think is part, is part of the, the fundamental character of America, uh, a respect for lawfulness, constitutionalism, individual responsibility. I think these are all, elements of the American character as it, you know, uh, as it developed over a period of hundreds of years. Um, I think everything, of course, is totally shattered now. I think it's all gone. And it's been replaced by wokeness um, and by the utterly destructive white uh, upper class, which is out to destroy whatever remains of, of human civilization. And a quick point from a libertarian position, in a truly anarcho capitalistic society, all property would be owned by private individuals. Therefore, open borders, that policy is not sensible. Mm-hmm. No. I'm not in favor of open borders. That, that doesn't make any sense. 
a country has property rights. You determine if you're going to let in Germans or Jews. The German has the right to free movement, but he's not obligated to your benevolence. That doesn't make right. any sense, the concept of open borders. Mm -hmm. So a follow-up question. In the age of multiculturalism, does immigration make sense? I think what you're asking me is something else. In an age of multiculturalism, does immigration restriction make sense? Right? I mean, that, that's what no, 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 I'm asking if, if it makes sense to promote open borders in the age of multiculturalism when you're encouraging people to migrate to America, but they're told to, to maintain their culture, even if, it's, even if it contradicts American culture. Well, I don't even, the problem is I don't even know what American culture means anymore. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you listen to Fox News, you think everything is the way it was like about 1900 or something, but it's not, you know, it doesn't exist anymore. I mean, you're sort of wondering what they're even talking about. Um, uh, it sounds, it sounds, sounds ridiculous to me. The question is, what can we do to avoid further harm at this point? I have no illusions you're going to restore, um, but, you know, do we want more chaos? Um, also, the more people who flood in, you know, in this, eventually they're going to get asked for all kinds of rights. Uh, uh, Trump was right. Many of them are not, they're not presenting their best people. Maybe we're bringing drug cartels into the country. Um, and uh, all these people will get to vote at some point, maybe in the next six months, you know, if the Democrats have their way. Um, and, uh, you know, th this will simply add to our chaos. We'll, 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 we'll add to the, uh, uh, the, uh, destruction of any shared code. I don't even know if you have a shared, ex except for, uh, you know, t transgendered operations. What is our shared culture in this country now? I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy. Or hating white people. Uh, I mean, it, it, this, this has become our shared, it's like, it's like in Germany, hating Germans is the shared culture. Then Turks come in and they say, you know, the, the Turks just don't hate Germans enough. I mean, they, they should really hate us. And they, you know, they don't seem to care enough. So, so I mean, it, 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 there, there's a kind of negative ideology, which sort of just takes over. And, uh, you know, it, it, and, and then you always have the people who want to restore things. The neoconservatives will restore things. So we'll fight war against Russia to spread lesbian rights there or something like that, or uh, uh, gender equality or... <clears throat> um, and we'll teach everybody, I don't know, to read the speeches of Martin Luther King or somebody like that. And, and this will give America a sense of unity again. Well, you're not going to get the sense of unity again. It's gone. <laughs> and, and what they have are, you know, it's just basically imposing their own ideological idiosyncrasies on the rest of us. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I think uh, the best thing that could happen um, is total decentralization in the United States. I mean, contrary to what, to what Donald Trump wanted, um, I'd be very happy to see, you know, areas that would at least be semi-autonomous in the country so that we could survive here without being controlled from Washington or New York. <laughs> I agree. We should be allowed to create our own conservative and libertarian spaces. That makes perfect sense, decentralization. Mm -hmm. But... You sound rather pessimistic, yet as a younger person, I am, I am optimistic. Question, can you identify young people in their 20s and 30s with the potential to reshape the conservative movement? Not necessarily politicians, but young writers and some politicians. Can you identify young writers? Or? Yeah, young writers and young politicians who are similar to people like me and you. Yeah, yeah, they write. They write for our magazine. Yeah, for our website. Name them. Name them. I want you to promote. I don't know. Them. Just, just, just read our magazine. There are lots and lots of these people. Yeah. And uh, what what impresses me is that uh, you know we are outside the uh, conservative establishment mainstream. You know, and yet they're always asking to write. I, I see a lot of people writing for Lou Rockwell. Yeah. Uh, so you know, there 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 are people you know out there who identify with us. Um, I think if we had more of a presence in the conservative media, which we're not likely to ever get. But if we had more of a presence, um, it would make a difference. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I think, there, I think uh, uh, the conservative establishment seems to be um, in some ways falling apart. Like uh, they close Weekly Standard. 
National Review was just bleeding readers. They're just losing money. Yeah, over. National Review is just a joke. Oh, very funny. Yeah, they're they're losing readers, and uh, uh, Fox News is lo- losing viewers. They're, lo- they're, tr- they're they're in a free fall in terms of viewers. They're just losing them. Uh, now, no one is quite sure why. One of the ex- explanations is there's too many. You know, there were too many anti-Trump people on Fox News, and uh, although I don't know some of my leftist relatives thinks that Fox news is neo-Nazi or something <laughs> so far to the left. But uh, you know, there, there were people on the right who were very unhappy with how Fox uh, treated the, uh, the election fiasco with Trump. <clears throat> um, but I, I, al- I also think it's just always more of the same stuff and the same faces you see, you know, they just wear different clothes and they, they appear in different years. And now we're having so and so I just saw that person five minutes ago and, you know, there's just so many people they don't have on. Uh, the other thing is, if it was someone like Tucker Carlson, he has good monologues, but then uh, most of his guests, they're just nothing. I mean, they're people his sponsors want him to put on. They're just utterly boring. Uh, and, you know, it's uh, so so beyond the first five or 10 minutes, you know, I, I, I never watch it. I never watch that. Part. And I know a lot of other people, just, they just t- turn it off. Um so, you know, I, I don't know what um, what Newsmax is doing. They must have different people. They have nothing to do with me. But, you know, I know people who do work for Newsmax. Um, and, you know, I assume that, you know, there are some conservatives. We always have people asking to write for us who, you know, do stuff for Newsmax or some of these other um, uh, conservative, you know, sort of non-establishment conservative enterprises. So I, I, I think the conservative uh, movement is probably going to become more open, not less open. I mean, even though, you know, my books simply show it being closed, but uh, I, I think it's, you know, th- this is generational and the generation that managed to close it into, you know, have a kind of restrictive media presence um, may be passing. There's just too many people out there. <clears throat> um, and not all of them get invited to CPAC as speakers either. I've never been invited or attended that. And I don't know anybody who has. So, uh, you know, I, I, th- I think new organizations are going to come around. I think there are new writers. Uh, there does seem to be a growing presence um, on the independent right. Um, our magazine, uh, uh, Chronicles, has just exploded. <laughs> Readers were doing extremely well. Uh, and you know, people say I'm, I'm a great. It's, I'm not. I'm not the main reason. <laughs> Let me assure you, <laughs> the main reason is that there are lots of people out there who are now buying what we have to say. <laughs> Whether I say it or my assistant say it or staff says it, there are lots of people out there. And and this this was would not have been true ten years ago. <clears throat> Yes, the, 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 yes. The, 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 we only need to secure funding to, to challenge the mainstream left and right. right. And that, that's right. going to be a big issue going further. We don't have enough yes, money. It, yes, it is. Well, Where, no, that, that's that's part of it. I think you're. I think I think the other part of it is you have to get some kind of media access. As I keep telling the publisher and others, you 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 just can't stay where you are. We are growing, <clears throat> but the next step is to have some kind of media presence and we don't have that we're kept out by by the conservative establishment media if we can get into that you know we're an entirely different stage of, of development um we're not really hurting for funds at this point that, that's not that's not a problem but it, it is media access that you're going to have to get uh, obtained at some point in order to move up <clears throat> well uh... to become like national review <laughs> in other words <laughs> Well, based on what I've been hearing, you seem to be very optimistic. So I'm even more motivated to build a brand because as I said to you in our personal con- conversation, I am not mm-hmm. interested in selling me. I like to sell my ideas. But if you want a movement to be taken seriously, you have to sell yourself. So- I, th- I think, I th- well, you, you have to make yourself acceptable at some point in order to sell your ideas. Uh, and if you're, you're selling the wrong ideas, <laughs> you don't become acceptable. What, what about Maxine Waters and Al Sharpton? <laughs> They're selling the right ideas. They attack the white race. They're black racist. <laughs> and, they, and they get money from, white, from, from anti-white whites. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, as we're, we're about to close now, 
Paul, I, I'm very elated that you accepted the offer. I'm yeah, sure that you. people will love your insight as usual. And I expect this show to do quite well. It was, it was a pleasure to listen to you. I just enjoy learning from you and getting your wisdom. Well, thank you. And now I'm going to leave. Yes, <laughs> okay. thanks. Nice.